are back. You're listening to You Would Think, the Philadelphia Flyers podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Collington. Joining me today, you guys already know who it is. It's Mike Senior. <laughs> How are you? Welcome, welcome, everyone. Good to be back. How and it's it? good It's good to have you back. And uh, that is actually it today. Uh, these, Kevin, these had some, Kevin had some stuff going on and couldn't join us today. Right. But, and it's, you know. it's Mother's Day. So yeah, it's yeah and it is Mother's Day. We did want to kick off the show with uh, a little happy Mother's Day to all we, you mothers out there. And, absolutely. And, and uh, we forgive you, Kevin. It is Mother's Day. Exactly. Hopefully you're with, with your mom and you're enjoying your time. I know it's been a long, uh, long couple of months for everyone. Although yeah. I will say the last two weeks didn't seem as long as the two weeks before that. Yeah, absolutely. Things are things are starting to pick up a little bit, and we're a starting touch, to hear a touch, and we're starting to hear a little tiny bit of news about you know the NBA is open in some facilities and right. states where it's allowed for individual workouts. It's slowly the door is just starting to creak open, but the UFC ran a full event last night, and yep. we're not a UFC show. But I bought the pay-per-view, and man, it was fun. Like, we it, don't have to talk a lot about it. And I know I'm bum-rushing you here a little bit. No, it was, it was something going on that we didn't know the result to. And you know what? My, my girlfriend and I have you know, recently gotten into the UFC just kind of casually. It started kind of through some Joe Rogan stuff, and we kind of started watching some fights. And I like Joe. He, his podcast is great. He is what he is, but I, 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 but I like him. Yeah, and apparently he makes like six figures per podcast. So like we're trying to get well, there. But God, God, God bless him. He puts you out think- a podcast every other day, and I would too. But uh, either way, I- that's what kind of got us into it, and we we decided, you know what? There's one event. Yeah, nah. nothing else going on. We're not spending our money at the movie theater or at restaurants or nothing. Buy a right. pay per view, and Correct. it was fantastic. Dana White, if you see this, thank you for putting on a fantastic card. That was incredible. <laughs> Oh, no, was, I, I didn't see it. Bottom. It was insane. I, I saw all the highlights this morning. And again, I enjoyed just having something fresh that they were talking about on ESPN. That, not something that, you know, uh, speculation about future. But hey, this happened last night. Let's talk about it. So that, even that was refreshing. Francis Ngannou is a Mack truck. He's a Mack truck. No, I understand. If you saw the fight, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Which, which I didn't. Like I said, I always saw the highlights. If you go on Twitter, you'll be able to find the whole thing because it'll fit in a GIF. It's gotcha. a short fight. Okay. <laughs> but either way, um, I, I did want to mention that, the fact that we did have live sports, live actual combat sports in Florida last night. Uh, everything went well. Uh, they did actually have somebody test positive, but they knew he was coming in from – people who had it they kept him as isolated as they could other than when he weighed in but we're not talking about that um and they sent him home he got the positive test right. they mm-hmm. sent him and his two corner men who had it home hopefully nobody else tests positive and everyone gets out of this nice and clean uh i heard dana white say it at his post-fight press conference last night they're trying to pave the way for other sports they're trying right. to show other sports <laughs> leagues how to do it safely and um, and look, we're only going to be able to do whatever is done anywhere it's done. We're only going to be able to maximize the safety. Right. Okay. Of course. Um, you know, we have two offices where I work and I went into the second lower key office, which has a lot less people in it. Well, there's nobody in the other office anyway, but um, our, our center city office, which is, you know, our everyday office, I didn't go into, but I went to our satellite office and it was great just to, you know, kind of feel like I was going to work again. I went three out of the five days this week and it was great. Um, but time, also- time, time out, time out. Let's rewind the clock six months. Mm-hmm. I jump into Mike Sr.'s car in traffic at 8 a.m. and tell him that he's going to miss driving to work. I know. What does he say to me in I- November or whatever? Are he you, tells are, me I'm crazy. Are, well, are you giving me the reason why? <laughs> no. If I just right, say, right, Mike exactly. Senior, in, in six months, you're going to be begging for so, the right, opportunity something's gonna to go drive wrong, to work. You're, right. Okay, yeah. Now I would say you're crazy. Well, exactly. I, say you're crazy. I say you're crazy anyway. But wow. Yeah. <laughs> that'll just give me another reason. Uh, those in glass houses, my friend. Yeah. No, I understand. Uh, but either way. Um, that, that's probably works so well together. I, I did want to mention live sports last night. And, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, because we are starting to see early hints of, of, of other things. Which we're more familiar with right. coming and back. I, and that's why I mentioned my work. It's just early, you know, early hint. Okay, I was able. And again, what my, my other point to that was also, I can, uh, that comes with a certain amount of risk. Yeah, no matter sure. No matter how you turn it, no matter how you spin it. Uh, I was around hardly anyone. Okay. 
did the mask thing you know, that I'm supposed to do, all that stuff. I took all every precaution, but there's still, it's not as safe as staying at home. So we, we can't live like this for the next 10 years. So sure. we have to do something and this is not a COVID show, but you know, it's my, definitely my, my, not. My, We're going to be moving beyond what, it yeah, very quickly. Right, there yeah, my point being what you said is we, you know, yes, we, 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 the sports will move forward as safely as possible. Also, I don't want to feel like we shortchanged the Mother's Day. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. We did. You're right. We mentioned it, but to everyone out there, happy Mother's Day. Have a great day. day. You know, obviously there's a ton going on, um, but uh, hopefully everyone gets to see their family as much as possible today. Uh, If, you know, whether it's visits or drive-bys or shout outs or wave outs. It'll be a great day for Skype or FaceTime or Zoom. And calling, you know, all that stuff. So everyone enjoy and uh, family first. I I will be doing that after this podcast. Definitely. We're awesome. We're recording a little bit early in the morning, but yes, my mother will be getting a call. If, if I called her before 8 AM, she would not be very happy with me now. Happy mother's day, Kyle's mom. Uh, Happy mother's (laughs) day to uh, Mrs. uh, Mrs. Grandma Giletto. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as well as Mike Senior's uh, yes. wife. You know, yep, happy absolutely. Mother's Kirsten, Day. happy Mother's Day. My wife, happy Mother's Day. Uh, er- Erica, happy Mother's Day to the cats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, happy listen. Mother's Day, Erica. <laughs> oh, we are moving on. And uh, before we get into the actual poll talk, because we did, uh, we did have a poll to resolve this week. Uh, that poll was found on our Twitter, at YWT Podcast, yeah, uh, where you sure. can find... I'm sorry. I'm not sure anything was resolved, but go ahead. <laughs> well, listen. I, <laughs> can you, an can you believe it? Reached. I'm fired up. Can you believe it? Well, we're going to get into that. An yeah, answer conclu- was reached. A, a conclusion was was and, achieved. And you can find everything else that we do over on our Twitter at YWT. Uh, you can find uh, Mike here at Mike from S Jersey. You can also find producer Mike at Mike underscore Giletto. Uh, you can also find us, the show, just by searching, you would think, on Facebook, Instagram, Podbean, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, sportstalkphilly.com. I, we're all over the internet. We're in every corner of the internet. Uh, but anyway, one of the corners of the internet that we spent this week was over on our Twitter. And um, the greatest, the most memorable Flyers game of all time, according to our fans, and you know what? We had a decent little result here at the end with 158 votes in our final. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, the that's most, a good number of votes. The most memorable Flyers game of all time, according to our fan base, is the 2010 Game 7 game against Boston, the Boston Bruins that resulted in the Philadelphia Flyers uh, completing the reverse sweep and beating the Boston Bruins, becoming only the third team in NHL history to come back from 3 nothing down in a series. And oh, by the way, they were also down 3 nothing in Game 7. Uh, because this, you this, legally have to mention that when you talk about this game. Right, but only because the symmetry is so, oh, it's you know, so amazing. It's, just, it's chef's kiss. If you if you were going to write a movie, that's what you would write. They were down Absolutely. 3-0 in the series, and they were down 3-0 in the game. Um, the Mighty Ducks, you know. Correct, correct. So, but they got it wrong. Did they? Yeah, they got it wrong. Okay. Um, How, I mean, there's no way in the world that that game is – it didn't put them in the Stanley Cup final. It didn't win the Cup. They weren't the fr- if they were the first, you know, they, it would still be wrong, even if they were the first team ever to come back from a 3 0 deficit, it would still be wrong. But I think you I and could, I disagree about that I, one, but, okay. but I could live with it more. Sure, be- being the third team to do it, it's not as special as being the first team to do it. Okay, um, you can't say it's you were the impossible. first team since 1975 or whatever it yeah, is, or 85, um, or first team in a very, very long time, yeah, but you can't say you did the impossible. No, that's it, been, fair. It, had, it had been done twice before, so it's clearly not impossible. Um, you can argue that you did that's more rare than a Stanley Cup because a Stanley Cup is re- awarded every year. You know, that, that has only happened three times in history. The Stanley Cup has been awarded 130 times. You know, yeah, there's something somebody, to be said for the, the history there. Yeah, but somebody has to win the Cup. Sure. Before, before the playoffs start, there's going to be a Cup winner, so that's, I don't think that's a fair analogy. Well, right, exactly. There's guaranteed to be a cup winner. There's oh. not guaranteed to be history like no, that. I'm, no, I'm not saying you know, they, the Flyers have done it once in their history. They won the cup twice in their history. I, I'm not right. saying. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's not an amazing. I'm just saying there's an memorable. argument. There. Listen, at the end of the day, I, mean, I do believe that the, the, the game, the game where the Flyers became the first expansion team to win the Stanley Cup, uh, you know, seven years into their existence or whatever it was, I agree that should have won. I'm not sitting here arguing the other. Right. I'm just offering a little possible perspective uh we do also run into the problem and we've talked about this on the last several shows 
we use the word memorable. And when we talk about memorable from a fan perspective, a lot of people will tie that to games they literally remember happening. Fact or fiction, that's just how it's going to be. And the fact that a larger percentage of our audience was alive for 2010 than was for 74 is just kind of going to lend itself to that game being more memorable for a large percentage of our audience. Yes, I'll remember watching the game. But you, clearly the question is, which of the games has more longstanding memorableness to it? And the, the team's first cup win, you know, again, I'm not saying it was some of the earlier results wrong, you know, and I, I, we don't need to rehash all that. We're not. We're not that. They, 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 got, they got amazingly wrong. We will but, talk about some of the, uh, the semifinal matchups because we talked about them last week, but we're talking about the finals for right now. Right. But that doesn't change the fact that it's wrong. And they, and they ultimately, it's an indictment of the fan base. Okay? Um, Possibly the worst fan base uh, since the, uh, who's, who's, who's the worst fan base? Uh, probably since the Chargers LA fan base, which they're forgiven for being a horrible fan base because they've only had the team for two years and there's another LA team. So I will say the Flyers fan base at this point is not the worst fan base in sports. They're second to the Charger fan base. Which is about a bad, as bad a thing as you can say about a fan base, and the that's right. Second fan base, worst fan sorry, base in all of sports. In all huh? of sports, to to put that game ahead of the seven behind the Miami Marlins. Well, really, I, I don't consider any fan base of Florida a fan base because there's 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 no fan base for any sport, hockey, <laughs> baseball, the, outside of the possibility of the Dolphins. They have a semi fan okay. base, <laughs> and they've well, been there a hundred years. Okay, fine. Then the Arizona Diamondback. Really, you're telling me Flyers fans are worse than Arizona Coyotes fans? Most yeah. of them don't even know where the arena is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they don't even know where the arena is. When you don't put the cup, first cup winning game as the most memorable game ever, that's a serious indictment of the fan when base. When your fan base doesn't remember it, it can't be the most memorable. Like, that's, that's what I'm saying. Our problem. Then how did they I get, think the, your how did they get this, the. I think your problem with this is the use of the word memorable. If we had used best. I feel like you would have a leg to stand on here. But the fact that you the fact that the word was memorable. Well, the best game is the most memorable. That's it's, not it's, true. Yeah, it's 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 the same thing. Well, you know, most important, most memorable, best, uh, biggest achievement, biggest accomplishment, whatever, whatever you want to call it, the game you remember the most. You know, I know I'm fifty five, but it's not like I was twenty when it happened. It's not game like I you remember when it happened. the most. I I the only thing I remember in my head about the game was in the third period, they were still ahead one because we're all listening to it outside on the radio. We're playing again. We're 10 years old. We're, you know, hockey is a thing that's coming. It's that hasn't come yet. Okay. Um, they're winning one, nothing in the third period. And everybody goes, okay, let's run inside to watch it. And all the only thing I remember is Gene Hart's call at the end. The flyers are going to win the Stanley cup. That's the only thing I remember. So, "Quote unquote memorable." I remember the whole 2010 game. I remember both. Mike, what's what's your favorite movie of all time? I know you're a big movie guy. My favorite movie of all time. One of them is Pulp Fiction. Okay, Pulp. Let's one stop. of them is right there. Of, Pulp Fiction. That's fine. That's a great example. Is any time watching Pulp Fiction as good as it was watching it the first time? Nothing compares. No. no. Nothing compares. Now let me. Let me finish here. You got to watch Pulp Fiction get filmed. I only saw it on Ratty VHS 20 years later. That's the difference in how we look at this cup. To you, to me, it's still a cup. It's still an amazing movie if it's shot in 12, you know, 144p resolution. It's still a fantastic movie. It still has a great script. It still has great acting. It still has a good soundtrack but it's not the same. You but, saw it in crystal clear IMAX. I saw it on a TV four inches wide. You know what and, I'm saying? And at the same time, let's say the movie's made a different movie 20 years later, you go to the movie theater and you watch Shawshank. Yeah. And Shawshank's a very, very good movie. Okay. It mm. might not even be, it might not be as good as, it might not be as good as Pulp Fiction. Exactly. Just because you saw it but in the same manner me, in which you saw Pulp Fiction. To me, Shawshank will be a better movie. 
because I saw it in theaters and I only saw Pulp Fiction on tape. I, we, we, we can agree to disagree. I'd be willing just, to bet. Just you, saw them both, you saw them both in theaters. You can look at both and judge them through the same lens. I saw one in the theaters and I saw one on my grandma's tube TV. But I didn't. I only saw f- three minutes of the Stanley Cup winning game. It doesn't matter. You experienced it. You yeah, were in I, the moment. You were there. Correct, you just correct, said you listened to the whole thing correct, on the radio. Correct. Not about watching it. You were experienced it. You listened correct. it to it. You were we, there. That I did. I did experience. I knew what was going on. And I exactly. Yeah. And you saw it in crystal clear HD. Nobody under the age of say fifty got to experience that. Nobody. True. None of them. True. In the True. same way that people older than fifty did. Everybody 50 and younger, roughly, of course, 50 and younger, those people saw it on TV. Yeah, but Older as a fan people base, you're still supposed saw it live, you know? But as a fan base, you're still supposed to know your team's history. Uh, and they do. Okay. That's why it's still got 40 plus percent of the vote. I'd be willing to bet 43% of our fan base was not alive when that game happened. That number is higher than just the people that were alive. But when you use a word like memorable, like we have, the people that were alive for it are going to vote for it. Like, it's just how it's going to work. I threw this analogy, and hopefully this works because it's fresher in your mind and you know what it meant. The the Eagles win the Super Bowl, Nikki Six, the amazing day, all that stuff. 30 years from now, in 2050 or whatever, you know, uh, the Eagles win a playoff game against the Atlanta Falcons in the wild card round that they were losing – 41 to 10. Okay. And they have this second half surge. Amazing. They come back and they win the game and they lose the next round or, you know, they go to the Super Bowl and they lose the Super Bowl. Is that game you put then you put a poll up in 2052, most memorable Eagle game ever. Does that game have any shot of beating the 2017 Super or 17, 18 Super Bowl win? Zero. Sure does. It's got zero chance. No, because here's the thing. Listen, first of all, the first Super Bowl. Will that, 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 be listen, the I just let you flesh your whole thing, thing out. Let me respond. You just fleshed your whole thing out. I'm let not me saying what will happen. It, let me respond. Should it happen? I guess this is the way I put, should have put it. I've let you flesh your whole thing out. Go ahead. Here we go. Okay. First of all, I'm upset that you are comparing football to be, uh, hockey in this perspective because I don't know if this opinion is unpopular or whatever. I will take game seven over any NFL playoff game minus maybe a Super Bowl. If you go round by round, I will take a game seven over the equivalent round NFL game every time. There's nothing better than game seven hockey in my book. So to game, me, it's game, a game different, seven of game seven of round one is not necessarily to me. It's better, uh, better. than the wild card round of the NFC in the NFL. No, you can make the divisional argument. round is every, better than the divi- the second round in the NFL. Every, Every conference playoff. championship in the NHL is better than the conference championship in the you NFL. Can, you can make the argument in football, every game, every playoff game is game seven. Sure. And that's fair. But if every game is set game seven, then no game is game seven. They, they wash each other out. I, I didn't say I liked it. I right. said you can, make the, uh, you can make that point. And no, by the way, I am not I mean, advocating that football go to best of three by any <laughs> right. means. No, and and at, the, like, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm – I'm I'm a huge hockey fan, and the reason I'm a huge hockey fan is because there's nothing in sports, absolutely nothing in sports, and I love all sports, that can equate or be as good as playoff hockey. Forgetting about right. game seven. Right. Playoff hockey as a whole has a level of intensity that's just you, – you, you can't match it. The game changes. The game literally morphs into a different game. And I've always said, if, if the NHL could figure out a way, and you can't, to have – Playoff hockey played in the regular season and have the same game played in the regular season as played in the playoffs, it would not be the fourth sport. Not by a yeah. mile. But you can't. You can't and do nah, it. No, you can't. It's impo- there's, there's, can't. A hum- there's the human element to it. You can't you convince know. players to Yeah, exactly. Have, oh, we're going to recreate Storm in the Beaches of Normandy. No, you, you can't create that. And that's not to over – I don't mean to insult anybody who's ever been in war. I apologize. But that's – playoff hockey – it's the closest thing to combat that you will get in sports. It literally is a war of attrition. I mean, I which think the is UFC made- is literally the closest thing to combat you'll get in sports, but you know, you're close. You're in the right ballpark. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
It's it, it's it's just a war. Listen, I just got to knock you down a peg. You know how I work. And and game seven is an even intensified version of you know of, of that you know right. accumulation. And of that's that exactly war going and that's on. exactly my thing is that it's hard comparing an NFL playoff game to a game seven because it just feels different. You have the intimacy of the first six games. Yeah. There is momentum one way or the other. Whoever won game six has momentum, regardless of yeah. how the rest of the series has played out. And look, and, and in those three, the three other sports, the game that you play in the regular season is the same game you play in the Super Bowl or right. in the, in the, they're, you're, the roughly pitchers speaking, pitching. penalties are called about the yeah. same and the, the game's the officiated pitchers, roughly right. the same. Pitchers are pitching, hitters are hitting, quarterbacks right. are throwing. The game is exactly the Astros same. are banging on trash cans. Yeah. <laughs> in hockey, it's not that way. The game literally changes. When you hit, when you go into the corner for the puck with the guy and you hit him, you're Ask not the Toronto just trying, Maple Leafs. Yeah, you're Ask not just the Boston trying, Bruins. Yeah. You're, you're not just trying to take the puck from the guy at that point. Every single thing is intensified and you're trying trying to make a statement so that at that moment, what you do in that moment plays out later in that period, later in that second in period, series, third period, the, later yep. in the series. Exactly. It becomes a, a like I said, I keep using that but war of attrition, but that is yep. what it becomes. Who can be the last man standing after yep. we just pound each other game, game shift after shift after shift after yep. shift for seven games. We talk about that 2012 Flyers Penguin series, you know, does, does Claude Giroux come out and lay that big hit on Sidney Crosby in game six if all the shenanigans in game three don't happen? Right. Probably not. And it's the right. kind of thing where, you know, this big old tension pot had built and eventually boiled over. And um, no, but getting back to your, your original question about should, it, you know, an Eagles playoff game, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't necessarily know if it should. Uh, I think it would. Uh, because that's how recency bias works. And if, if we're talking 30, 40 years in the future, there will be a generational shift. And if there's some level of social media that people my age are not on, and that is where this poll is held, because, you know, no offense, people your age, generally speaking, are not on Twitter. I think you're aware of that. No, I understand. So if there's some social media that people my age are not on, and that's where the poll is held, I have no expectations for the results because I... It, <laughs> My age group, are my demographic isn't voting. But expectations are different than what should have been. And from now until the end of time, the most memorable flyer game will always be the 1974 Cup winner. Not according to our fans. 2010 and, game seven, and, baby. And they, and they got it wrong. I, that, that's all I'm here, to, I'm here to call it out. No, it's, to uh, me personally, if I look in my heart, what the answer to this question is, it's 2010 game seven. For me, personally. Now, it's I know game, it's not the it's correct the answer. You, it's the game now, I know you, it's not the correct answer. If the, if, the, if the question was, what is the game you remember most as a Flyer fan, I'm okay with that result. Sure. Well, that's, that's, that's literally what memorable question. means. No, that's not the question. The question was, what is the most memorable game in Flyers history? Okay, I that's would like you to define than, the word memorable. No, the, the, the way I'm phrasing the question is different. What is okay. the most memorable game to you as a fan is different than what is the most memorable game in the franchise's history. Those are two different things. Memorable. Adjective. Worth remembering. Notable. Which one that, is more all. memorable? Which, which one is more notable? The, the one that you, that you no, remember. No, it's different. Because it's worth remembering. Again, if the question was, what game does, does Kyle remember the most as a Flyer fan? Listen. I have no problem with you thinking it's the 2010 because that is in your brain – that, that's the one. Yeah. This is to the franchise, not to you. To the franchise. In the franchise's history, what is the most memorable game? And that is then the 74 game. you need game. to direct message every single person who voted on this poll and explain that to them. I've tried because to do Because those that. people answered, what is the most memorable game to me? Well, I purposely didn't put my finger on the scale this time. Uh, yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, no, you I didn't. did. I did not. I stayed off and out of the way until it was over. And then once it was obvious where there was about two hours left, then I put it out there. Okay, fan base, you did it again. You're a complete not a disgrace, blah, 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 blah. But that was with two hours left and it had no shot. You know, if, if 100 more people voted, it still wasn't going to get to a win. Right. So I did not put my finger on the scale. And look what happened. So yeah, I saved the embarrassment of the fan base, you know, four weeks ago or two weeks ago, whatever it was. Uh, Should have let it go. 
I could not. I could. I should have. I should have. Imagine what would have been different. I should. I should, exactly. I should have let them Imagine blow the. I should have let them blow the Bobby Clark. A whole different. Correct. I should have let them blow yeah. the Bobby Clark thing. I could have let them blow the seventy four thing, and then I could have really land base of this fan base. But I love you, fan base. Oh, okay. The the fan base that on April twenty first you tweeted was the worst fan base in all of sports. It is. <laughs> and then last night you tweeted that they're the second worst fan base behind the oh, LA Chargers. Yeah, because I forgot about LA. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so funny um it's, it's, well, either just, way it's just how i feel uh the results of our poll have come in uh the the most memorable flyers game of all time no matter what mike senior says is uh 2010 game seven against the boston bruins and I'm all that okay said that. all that said going back back to the semifinal game yeah I yeah that's com- what i wanted to talk am, about yeah. yeah i am completely fine with the seven with the 2010 game seven beating the 75 cup team Okay, so you're comfortable with, totally it being okay with that a finalist here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Against that matchup. If it was in the semifinals against 74, I think that it should have lost. But in this matchup, I'm okay with it winning. And I even think it sh- I even think it should have won. I'll even go that far. Um, even though I think the 75 team is the greatest Flyers team in history. And I, and More I on think that I have later. a lot of things. Yep. Um the the memorableness of the win in 74 was much more memorable than the 75 cup, even though it gave them dynasty, not dynasty, but it gave them long. Yeah, you win two in a row. You're in the conversation mm, for dynasty. I, I, you're there. You're in the and, conversation. And, and, the and, fact and, that you made got, it back the third year and lost in the yeah, final. And, and because, because Bernie got hurt, blah, right. blah, blah. And, and, and the red army game did happen in the 76. Year. I'd be willing clearly, to put the broad street bullies in dynasty conversation. Yeah, clearly, I could see arguments against it. But I could I put them in dynasty conversation. If not for the Red Army game and them clearly being the best team in hockey at that moment when they won that game and they lose Perrant thereafter and then lose to the Canadians in the finals, I think you can make the argument there was every reasonable expectation that they beat the Canadians in seventy six if Bernie doesn't get hurt. And three I, in a row was and three in a row was certainly a dynasty by any standard. And that Canadian team was getting ready to win some cups. They were a yeah. pretty good oh, they team. Were, they were fantastic. They, they were won, a pretty they won, good they, team. They won the next four, absolutely. And they would have uh, – the Flyers could have changed the course of history there. You know, you knock that – if you derail yep. that Montreal dynasty before it gets started, who knows what happens. If Bernie doesn't never take know. the stick – yeah, if Bernie doesn't take the stick to the eye – Maybe the Flyers does, are there challenging the, the Canadians does, yeah. through he that dynasty. Re- yeah. He doesn't retire early at 32 or 33. Uh, one of the, the bigger prime, what ifs in, in, in franchise prime, history yeah, in the prime sure. of his career yep and look we've talked about one of those before you know one of the things before about in sports what's something you can go back and watch with a player that wasn't there like yeah it's jordan coming back to play against houston or you know bernie coming back to play against the canadians those those would be two of the things that i would love to see most in sports that never happen right yeah, but, yeah no, we, I talk, get that. we talked about that before so uh, so even though the 75 team, I think, was a better team, the most I could see it losing as a memorable game again because we were favored against the Sabres. We were the better team. It was, you know, if we lose that cup, it's more memorable than if we win it. <laughs> right. It's a little more ho-hum. We've been here before. We won last year, and also we're super favored. Right. Correct. It's, a little more pre- uh, it's a little more expected that the Flyers win that second cup for sure. Correct. Now the others, going into that third cup, you know, obviously without that Bernie injury, right? And those games were tight too. It wasn't the Canadians did not blow us out. It was like no. two one, three two, two one. I think the game four, even though it was a sweep, it was very very close. I think they won game four like four two or something like that. It was the only game that they won by more than a goal. Hey so. hey Mike, would you say that that Montreal Canadiens team might be one of the greatest teams of all time? I don't, that one that beat them, I don't think so. But later, but later, yes, that dynasty run of the Canadians was absolutely one of the great. They were oh, so okay. Good. So, so would you say that um, you know if, if we ran a bracket over on our Twitter at YWT Podcast uh, where we talked about the greatest NHL teams of all time, the Montreal Canadiens of the the late 1970s might deserve a spot on that list. I think they would, and I think oh, that's you a know fan- what? I think we should run that fantastic idea. You know what? I think we should run that poll. In I fact, think that's a fantastic idea. We've already discussed it in our offline chat. <laughs> uh, we're going to be running a, our, our next poll. We're just going to unveil it here. Our next poll is uh, what is the greatest team of all time? And now we are pulling the scope of this one back a little bit. Uh, this is not just a Flyers question, obviously. Right. It's, uh, a, gonna, it's a, uh, correct. We're going to put a couple kind of vague guidelines in place. Um, 
We're only going back until right around the Gordy Howe era, kind of the mid 40s, 50s, kind of. A little bit, a little bit. And that's but, only just because we don't feel right making this right. list without putting Gordy Howe there. Correct. Uh, that's kind of our era thing. So we're not really going back any further than that because any further than that, it's not really hockey. They yeah, straight one, sticks and couldn't pass back, right. couldn't pass one forward. Of, so. One of the Gordy Howe teams, probably one of the Canadian teams right. that won 11 the other, in, in a 15 year period or something like that. After the that, other little else, guideline. The other little guideline is that um, we're only really putting one team per dynasty. And right. what I mean by that is we're not putting in the 86 Oilers and the 87 Oilers and the 88 Oilers. Right. They all deserve to be there. We get that. Right. But we'll take but the best taking, version of we're that kind dynasty. Of taking each dynasty, right. picking one team, and each dynasty is kind of putting their best foot forward. And uh, we would like our fans – you know, we're trying to crowdsource this. We're Flyers fans. We're trying to get some perspectives from outside. We're trying to get this thing shared wide and get as many different teams as, as possible in the conversation. We're talking about uh, the Detroit Red Wings. We talked about that Gordy Howe team. We're also talking about the late 90s team that clashed with the Avalanche, uh, the early 2000s team with 10 Hall of Famers on it, and then even that late 2000s Hall of Famer, uh, the last run with um, Lidstrom. Right. Uh, when Dotsuk and you know Zetterberg were in their prime, there and the yeah, there, there were some there were some amazing teams. Right, the the Oilers of the late eighties, the, the Islanders, the Islanders. Had, had had their run. The, the Flyers, the, the the Broad Street Bullies are probably going to get you know a spot on this list. Uh, but we did uh-huh. want to crowdsource, and like I said, we wanted to kind of put it out there. And uh, I'm interested in having fans of other teams on the show. I'm I, I'll tease a little something here. We're going to have. A special episode coming out in a couple of days uh, it's me talking to a a fan of a different team and you know you might know who it is if you follow some youtube stuff and you know we'll talk about that moving on but uh i, I would love to get more people in you know if we uh if we talk about a team and you know there's somebody that you want us to talk to that's a montreal Canadiens fan or a, a toronto maple Leafs fan or an edmonton oilers fan or any of you know let us yeah, know and yeah definitely so because yeah, like treat us at ywt podcast Right. For instance, the 87 Flyers. Yeah. Arguably the greatest team never to win the cup. The best they deserve a Philly. spot. That's the thing. The, the best team in Philly by far not to win a championship. Without a doubt, that 87 team was great. If there's, we're going to, obviously we're very in tune to that as Flyer fans. If there's a, a team like that in another city, please let us know. We'll, we'll, you Absolutely. don't have to win the cup necessarily to be in that 32. Yeah, and I, and I think that 87 Flyers team – is probably pretty well known as a really good team to not win the cup. Um, but like for Flyers fans, you can look at a team like that 04 team. And yeah, they lost in the Eastern Conference Finals, but that was a really good hockey team. And if you're not a Flyers fan, you don't necessarily know that that team exists. Right. So if there's you know, a looking team back there, on the annals of history. So right. tell us what your team is if, if you're a fan of another team and you know, what's your 04 Flyers, right? What's your team that has slipped under the radar and doesn't get the love it deserves, you know, among the greatest yeah, teams of all time? We're willing to evaluate. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that at, um, at YWT Podcast. And, um, Mike, what do you think? Uh, name a couple of your favorite teams of all time from when you were uh, maybe a little younger growing up watching hockey. Uh, like, like, um, like I said a little bit earlier, uh, I think the, the best Flyer team – on that list that should go into that bracket would be actually the 76 team. I agree. I, th- I think that that was the, the, team be- that pe- the team that beat the red army was the, that was the best might've version been the best group of the Philadelphia Flyers to ever pull of on a those sweater. three teams. They, the Reggie Leach uh, factor was added. That was added in 75 as well, but you had that factor and they just, again, the, the lineup, on, the lineup you, on red army day. Right. Might be was it. The, was the best. Flyers it might be team. It. I, yep. I agree with that. Before I, Bernie I, got hurt. They weren't the best ever. Um, I think the 87, it can make the argument for 85, but the 87 Oilers, I think they were certainly in that conversation. And I'm, I'm talking about amongst the Flyers. I'm sorry. Oh, amongst I, amongst yeah, the Flyers, yeah, yeah. yes, definitely. Said, I'm talking about, that might me, be the best collection of players to ever pull on a Flyers uniform. Correct. That, that's on game to day. Me, correct. Correct. Okay. And that's, that's, that, and that's, that's where I would go. Yeah. But either way, uh, let me, on, let me pull up our list real quick. We, uh, we've mentioned quite a few teams. Um, I know I talked about that early 2000s Buffalo Sabres team, like Danny Briere, when he was an animal in Buffalo. Right, right. Um, you got the, the Penguins back-to-back cup uh, win. Yeah, we got to do it. They, they got to they be in the conversation. Honestly, both 
of the Penguins back to backs probably have to be considered the the Mario Yager one and the Dino right. Sid one. I, I hate yep. to do it. But we got to do it. You kind of have to do it. I know. Like, I don't want to do it, but do we have to put two Penguin scenes on this here's, list? Here's, here's, I know, but here's... No, I, I don't think we do. I don't do want to. I don't think we do. Here's, here's why I say that. Um, the Crosby back-to-back cup win, that might be the worst team ever to win back-to-back cups. And I begrudgingly say that because that just gives you even more fuel to the how good Sidney Crosby really has become. The oh, team man. really... I know, like, I know, I know. That Nashville know. Predators team they beat was pretty good, man. No, I understand that. I understand that. What I'm saying is, I think Crosby has gotten so good. I mean, think about. Well, all yeah, but you teams. said it was one of the worst teams to ever win a cup. That's correct. Was good, dude. No, I'm not saying the team was bad. You can't win the cup if you're a bad team. I'm saying they're they're one of the worst teams ever to win back to back cups. Like if you list all the teams in the history of hockey who won back to back or more okay. cups, that team is probably the worst team of that list. But being on that list probably gets you a spot in our bracket. I gotta, I gotta see. Even if, like, I know we're talking about the worst, quote unquote, worst, uh, but we're talking about the worst of a very elite tier of teams. Here. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we're talking about the quote unquote worst team to win back to back Stanley Cups, man. Yeah, no, and and I understand what I'm saying. Actually, is an endorsement of Sidney Crosby. Right. I get that. I get that. But g- give me another look. The Flyers, Bobby Clark had Bernie Perron, had Reggie Leach. The Islanders had Brian Trottier, Clark Gillies, Bobby Smith, Mike Bossy. The Canadians had Guy Lafleur, Larry Robinson. There's no second guy. There's the Forget a third and fourth guy. There's no second guy with Crosby. There is none. Did you forget if Genny Malkin exists? I'm pretty sure you forgot if Genny Malkin exists, man. I I just don't put him on the level of a Mike Bossy. How about the fact that Sidney Crosby, and I'm saying this like this for a reason. How about the fact that Sidney Crosby turned Jake Gensel into a 40-goal scorer? That's how good Crosby is. Uh, Sure. I mean, Gretzky turned Crucial Niski into a 50-goal scorer. That's the thing. Sidney Crosby turns somebody every year into a 35 goal yeah, scorer. No, Who is Brian but, Rust? Why is he making money that, at the NHL level? That doesn't Sydney make Crosby. him a, that, but that doesn't make him a great team. And look, maybe maybe I just don't give enough credit to Malkin. The the year they you be- also have to remember how good their goaltending was in the playoffs during mm, those rounds. I, I don't think either one of their goalies is anything special. I, I think know, Mark Andre Fleury I know, I know has, a, has a discussion go, for top ten for, all time. No, not top, totally. No. He, if you want to go, he has a discussion to be in the Hall of Fame. I we think can have that lock. discussion. Just long longevity Mark, and what he's done in Vegas, maybe. But if, in my Monday, mind, March tenth, twenty twenty nine, oh one a.m. Mark Andre Fleury is a stone cold Hall of Famer. There you go. I said it. And and he may get there First based on lock. numbers alone. But no, he's not. No, he's not a first ballot, and he's definitely not a lock. And on the eye test alone, he's not a Hall of Famer. You can't put first ballot more to lock. You're talking Roy. You're talking Brodeur. You're talking Dryden. I mean, you, you can't. You can't name put a it better down. goalie over the last decade than Mark Andre. The last decade and a half, last fifteen years than Mark Andre Fleury. Uh, <sighs> Henrik Lundqvist has no cups. Pekka Rene has no cups. I, I understand. Uh, I'll wait. Any other names you want to throw out here? Uh, no, Tuka no. Rask has uh, one cup that he rode the bench for. I'll wait. Look, Listen, you're not going to get me you're, off this. Mark Andre ta- Fleury might be the best goalie of this generation. I just don't see. He might I, be. The eye test, it's just not there for me. I'm sorry. Then, Listen, then – your dislike of the Pittsburgh you're, Penguins is blind. No, you're talking about a guy who won a cup in Pittsburgh, okay, and couldn't even hold his job. He only won one cup, just FYI. Don't, don't, let's not put him in this otherworldly area. Uh, he won one cup. Okay. And two to three years thereafter, they said, we can't win another one with him. He, he had gotten that bad that they ran him out of Pittsburgh. They didn't protect him in the expansion draft to go to Vegas and he, and he'd already lost his job. They didn't, he, they'd already won two cups without him with Matt Murray. Okay. I so, think you're misremembering history a little bit here, man. I really do. What am that I team, that team was Mark Andre Fleury's until he got hurt late in the regular season of the first round. No, he lost, he lost his job to Matt Murray. It wasn't, it wasn't an injury thing. 
I think you're misremembering this, man. And then the second year when Matt Murray went down, Marc-Andre Fleury came in and played fantastic hockey in the playoffs. And, and so then Murray they didn't expose back. him because yeah. they had Matt Murray. Like, they, they exposed him in the expansion Murray, draft Murray because the other, option, the other option was for him to be riding pine Murray because went, Matt Murray was their guy. They Murray exposed him to, to do cups, him exactly. a favor. Yeah, sure. And they exposed, they exposed Marc-Andre Fleury to do him a favor, and then he single-handedly dragged a mediocre Vegas team to the finals. No, oh, that's that's revisionist history as well. That team played fantastically. They did play he fantastic. Was, William he was Carlson very had good. a great season. Jonathan was, Marshall had a great he season. Was, Riley he Smith was had very a great good. season. But it wasn't a good team. He was very good. I'm just I just don't see Hall of Fame. That first year Vegas there. team caught lightning in a bottle, but they Absolutely. were not a good hockey team. James Neal had the best season he had had in a decade. They were good that year. Right. They had Every then, player on their team had a career year that year. Look, they and didn't it turns miss, out that everyone's career year is like, eh, pretty good. They didn't miss the playoffs the next year. So it wasn't like they no. fell back to, you know, expansion. No, status. and as far as I'm concerned, they got jobbed the next year. That's, right. you know, with, so, with the whole five minute major thing. Right. So they, they, you don't do what they did in the two years that they did it and not be a decent team. No, I, I get what you're saying, but I think a lot of that, less than you're giving credit for, belongs to Marc Andre Fleury. You know, your he, goaltender, re, he, resurrected, he, been he resurrected his career in Vegas, absolutely. If he was healthy that first year in Vegas, he did miss some time. But if he was healthy all year that first year in Vegas, he would have gotten Vesna conversation. The only reason he's in the Hall of Fame conversation is because what has happened in Vegas. If that doesn't happen, if he goes to Vegas and they're the expansion team that everybody expected them to be for the last two years, people don't even remember he's in the league still. I okay, and, and what he did and what he did in Pittsburgh one year to win the cup, the Hall of Fame does not have every cup winner. You win one cup, it doesn't put you in the Hall of Fame. You know he was like the first overall pick, right? Like he, like he's been that's a guy pe- forever. That's, that's like just pedigree. Sure. I'm not saying you can't get in the Hall of Fame with one. Hashik has one, and he's clearly Hall of Famer. He's, he was great for a very, very long time. I'm saying Flurry wasn't that guy. He wasn't uh, great for a long time. He just wasn't. Sorry, are you talking about the year he played 65 games and had a 918, or the year he played 67 games and had a 913, or the year he had a 916, or the 915, or a 920, or a 921? Sorry, yeah, what year are you talking about where he giving, wasn't great? Yeah, but you're giving me save percentages in an era where the guys who stink were 905, 910. I mean, that's just that's just the, what that's what it's become. I don't necessarily agree with you. We're talking you know? 10 years ago when goaltending was still in pretty decent shape. Uh, if you remember, uh, no, before that 2012 average, lockout, goaltending was average, in pretty decent shape. The style. average save percentage at that time was probably 910. So he was slightly better than average. I think you're forgetting. And I don't know if it's because you weren't paying attention because he was a penguin and you hated him or. No, I just, I never saw great players be average for three years. I just never saw it. And to me, if you're a great player, you're never, you can be average for a short period of time. You can have a downtime. Mike Schmidt had his eras where, you know, his head has three months where he hit 220, but he didn't do it for three years. Mark Andre Fleury has three cups. Uh, he led the league in shutouts in 2014 He does, he does not have three cups. He rode the pine for at least two of them. He's got three rings. Whatever. That's, call it what you want to call it. He's got three cups. So does, so does Pookie Roberts from the Yankees in the, in the 50s. He has seven rings. What does sure. that mean? That doesn't mean anything. Fine. You, you, you get no credit for rings that you didn't play in. Great. Then for the rest of this conversation, you're not allowed to use championship accomplishment for anything. If you were if you, part of achieving a Achieving that championship, you do when you're the goalie. He, he was the goalie for one. Okay, let's let's see how many playoff Murray games he was, played. Murray was the goalie for two. I'm gonna go take a look at how many playoff games Murray he played was these hurt. Last two years. Murray was hurt in the second one in the first round, and Flurry played, and then Murray came back and won and won the cup. The rest of the playoff. Hold please. All right. <laughs> uh, in sixteen seventeen. Uh, I'm sorry. What year? Was that? I'm sorry. What year are we talking about here? And they won back to back. Yeah. Thanks. That doesn't. I don't. I, I don't remember the year. <laughs> Absolutely killing me. All right. I don't Maybe remember the year. I'm sorry, you put me on second. the spot. I don't remember the year. They won their back to back cups in fifteen, sixteen, and sixteen, seventeen. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in fifteen, sixteen, Mark Andre Pleury played two games. That's the first cup. In 16-17, he played 15 games. 
He won that cup. No, Let's he didn't. fight. No, he didn't. He did not win that cup. He played 15 games. No, he didn't. Okay, so you're telling me Elite Prospects is lying about the fact that he played 15 games, had a 256 uh, goals against, and a 924 save. He played the so first round. they're lying round. about he that. Pl- he played in the first round. Okay. Murray, Murray was he on. He played 15 games. They don't play 15 games in the first round, Mike. He, he, may he played, played some somewhere par- else, he too. He played some parts of other games. Right, he played 15 Murray, games. Murray was the cup winner for the second cup. So if, if they played a seven-game series and Marc-Andre Fleury played all of them, that means Matt Murray still got pulled eight more times? No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying he played that 15 Murray, games. Murray was hurt. Okay. Was, and as soon as he was healthy, he came back and he won the semifinal and the final. Okay, and you remember that. Like, if we pull yeah. that up, okay. Yeah, pull, well, up, pull up Murray's stats for, we'll that, some, for, that, listen, run, for that run. We'll have Mike do some research, because I'm not doing research about the Pittsburgh freaking Penguins. <laughs> Uh, we will have Mike do our why research did they, here. If, 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 if Flurry won the second cup, why did they expose him? Because they had They would money. never have. What, so what? Flurry just won his second, the second if the cup. the Flyers won the cup last year, if, okay, let's, if the Flyers won the cup this year, Carter Hart got hurt, so Brian Elliott wins the cup. Who are they exposing for Seattle? They're not exposing Carter Hart. If, if, this, was, if this was Elliott's third cup? Like you're like you're asserting you're not exposing the twenty two year old. You're not doing it. That's that's I don't I don't think it's a fair comparison. But it he, literally he, is. It's the same situation. He did not he did not win three cups. Here it's revisionist history. He won okay, one. If Brian Elliott won the won the okay. So can you not cut him because he has three cups or has he like, has he won the cups or not? Has Mark Andre Fleury? How many cups has Mark Andre Fleury won? As a player or on a member how of the many, team? In your mind, how many cups is Marc-Andre Fleury responsible for? One. Okay. So they, they, then they cut him no problem. Great. They send him to Vegas because right. they had a 21-year-old with two cups and, right. and, and was still a rookie. Yes. He, was, he was a rookie the year after he won the cup. I know. <laughs> he had two cups as a rookie. It's crazy. Either way. Mark Andre Fleury is definitely one of the best goals. I don't know how I got myself in, back he's into not, the corner defending Mark Andre Fleury. He's not one of the best goalies of all time. I, I will concede he's in the Hall of Fame conversation, uh, and I can make the. I argument think I just decided I, that our next poll after greatest teams is going to be greatest, greatest goalies? goalies of the 21st century. Fleury doesn't. Fleury doesn't get of out of the, the 21st first round. century. We'll see he, how it goes. He doesn't get out of the first round. We'll see how it goes. I can name but ten listen, off the top we of will, my head. We're not. You're not going to. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> That's our next poll. Four weeks from now, start sending us. I'll take uh, Chico Resch first. I'll take Chico Resch first. <laughs> well, I said of the 21st century, so no, you wouldn't. But okay. Uh, either way, uh, you can let us know what do you think is the greatest team of all time. Uh, let us know on Twitter at YWT Podcast. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to say, Mike? <laughs> nope, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I feel like we've gone uh, gone pretty to the wall. Look, here. here's 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 a good thing about our next poll. There's nothing that can happen. Well, let me let me let me go easy on Careful. the never. There's nothing that don't, can let me, don't, don't I don't challenge the internet. It's right, right. It's very improbable that I'm going to be bashing the flyer fan base over these results. You heard it here first. <laughs> uh, either way, you can uh, let us know what you think. That poll will probably go up Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll talk to Mike and we'll get a day. Uh, that poll will go up Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll get suggestions from uh, you guys, our crew, Sunday, Monday. Uh, We'll get the poll together and get it up and start voting on it Uh, until, I mean, I, I, like I said, I have that special episode uh, maybe coming out this week, hopefully teasing Um, until then, if there's somebody that you want us to get on the show, let us know on Twitter at YWT podcast. Uh, You can find Mike at Mike from S Jersey or producer Mike at Mike underscore Diletto Uh, search. You would think on Facebook, Instagram, Podbean, iTunes, Google podcast, Spotify, sports talk, Philly, all over the place. And uh, you can find us pretty much everywhere over there. Um, one more time, I did want to say happy Mother's Day. I know we said it at the top of the show, but I did want to cap it off here. I don't know how much of our listenership uh, are mothers, but tell your mother happy Mother's say, Day. They all have mothers. Call so your tell mother. Everyone. Okay. Yep. If, if you, you haven't go. talked to your mother recently, maybe give her a call. It's Mother's Day. There you go. Until then, uh, anything else you wanted to say, Mike? No, I think we, I think we touched on everything. I think we touched on everything. Uh, until then, we're going to get out of here. And uh, on that note, see you next time.